Hey guys, most of you might know that I've just spent some time in Australia with caradvice.com where the sun shines and the snow certainly doesn't fall. <laughs> um, I shot a very relevant piece to my channel which was BMW M140i versus Golf R 7.5 with their legendary presenter Paul Marrick. So I thought I'd share this video on my channel as opposed to being on their channel but please check out all of their YouTube channel and their website, all their stuff's great. Cheers, car advice. If you've got 60,000 to spend on a hot hatch, but you don't want to break the bank, you've got to have these two at the top of your list. But which one should you buy? Well, today we're going to find out, and we're going to get the help of this guy, Joe Achilles, a self-confessed BMW tragic. Hey guys, how's it going? So Car Advice has invited Joe Achilles out to Australia to help us test some cars and we thought these two would be right up his alley. Now Joe, I said you're a BMW tragic. I meant that you love your cars. What do you do? Why are you a BMW tragic? So, uh, yeah, people class me or call me the BMW man back home in the UK. Okay. I think a lot of that has got to do with the fact that I've owned maybe five or six new BMWs in the past three years. But yeah. I'm, I, I love, I love all cars. I just, yeah, anything, anything with a steering wheel and four okay. wheels. Okay. Favourite BMW? I think that's probably an important question. Uh, I have to say bang for buck, the M140 yep. or the M lights in general since okay. they came out. Um, I just think they're such awesome cars. If I could have anything, it would be an M, uh, E46 M3 yep. CSL. Now, part of the other good thing about you being here, you work as a chauffeur back home. That's yep. a full-time job. You chauffeur celebrities around. I do. Um, you've mentioned that Taylor Swift will be coming here today. Uh, What's absolutely. she like? Is she good? She's awesome. Yeah, she's uh, she's a real good giggle. She's not coming, is she? No, she's not coming. No. no. Right. I'll give you a guess as to what my chauffeur car is. Okay. Is it a Mercedes-Benz S-Class? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's a BMW 7 Series. Oh, how did you guess? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Intuition. Okay, so we're going to get down into it. We're going to have a look at these two cars and then we're going to test them out to see which one you should spend your money on. These cars are of course the potent BMW M140i which sends drive to the rear and uses a turbocharged six-cylinder engine and the cracking Volkswagen Golf R which is a smaller four-cylinder turbocharged engine and sends torque to all four wheels. So Paul, tell us the difference between the Golf R and say a regular box standard Golf. Look, there are a few differences. It does sort of at a distance look like a normal Golf, but when you get closer, you can see the highlights. So Golf R badges, they're all over the car as yep. you'd expect. Down the bottom here, you've got this awesome black highlight and it just makes the car look aggressive as it's approaching. Sure. And then of course, you're gonna spot these as well, the daytime running lights yep. around the side here. Golf R wheels plus your Golf R brakes. So black caliper with Golf R insignia. And this, the VAG group, they love doing this brushed aluminium finish on their sportier cars. You'll see this on S model Audis. Yep. This is my favorite part. This is the rump. Of course, you have your Golf R badge there, quad exhaust pipes and the black highlights down the bottom. And then this is where you see that progressive indicator. Now, Volkswagen Australia has introduced a few different models of the Golf R, so you don't need to get this top spec one. You can get a base model with a few less features. Okay. But I mean, 60 grand, it's still pretty good value for money. Absolutely. No. Okay, mate, BMW, closer to $60,000. Is it different enough from a normal one? I've noticed there's about a million of these badges around the place. Well, yeah, aside from the uh, million M badges that you can actually remove when you're specking the car, okay, cool. uh, which I do because I like, I like the subtlety of yep. this car, uh, you can tell from behind, certainly, the twin pipes. So some of the lower models have two singular pipes on one side, yep. but the M lights, the M140s, have got the two big pipes either side of each other. Um, also, the rear diffuser is in mineral grey, and it's in mineral grey on all the colours. So if you've got an estereo blue or white one, it's, it's in that colour. Ah, right. So okay. different to the body colour. Yep. Uh, as we walk around to the side, we've got the 719 alloys on here. Uh, when you look behind the actual alloy wheel, you see the estero blue calipers. Now they're the M performance brakes, which come standard on the M lights and they just give you a lot more stopping power. The actual discs are bigger as well, ventilated. And also hooking up to those are the brilliant Mission Pilot Supersport tyres, yeah. which are just fantastic, especially in warm weather. So out here in Australia, yeah. um, I've noticed just how much extra grip they give out here. And they last a long time as well. They give you very good longevity. In fact, I had a set on my M135, my original one. They lasted 25,000 miles. Oh my God. So uh, yeah. 25,000, that is crazy. It's, yeah, it's really amazing for a high performance <laughs> tyre. Uh, as you move along the outside of the car, or the side of the car, you got the ferric grey wing mirror caps. 
Now on the regular one series, they're either body color or black, but on the M lights, they are ferret gray. Uh, and continuing that theme, when we go down to the canards at the front here, they are also ferret gray. Um, They've also removed the fog lamps, which you get on the regular models. Now that's to do with cooling, but not that you could notice on this one because it's actually solid. But when you move around to the other side, you can see that there's another oh, little yeah. radiator behind here, an oil cooler, I think it might be. Um, and it gives extra cooling to that and also the brake ducts and stuff because this is a higher performance model than, than the regular cars. Well, I think we need to figure out which one of these two is the one to buy. Yep. Let's head out for a drive. So we're in the one series. This is at the top end of that $60,000 budget, but it is one hell of a car and a car that's familiar to us because Turbo 6 been around for a while in the BMW range. What do you love about this thing? This particular model, the M140, I love the fact, yeah, that it's got a Turbo 6 out front and it's rear wheel driven. And that's the thing, BMW has a long history with with inline sixes. Like I remember back when 3 Series or 330 was an inline six, such a smooth engine, you could get the 1 Series with an inline six naturally aspirated. Yep. They've now gone down this path of turbocharging it and it really feels like the right balance. Um, you've driven a lot of these cars on the track. What does it feel like at its, at its sort of outer limits? So I think the M lights are very good up to a certain point. Uh, I always say they're sort of a seven or eight tenths car, mm -hmm. whereas then the M2, for instance, would be the nine and tenths car. Gotcha. So they're set up very well, but when you start pushing them really hard on track, they, I wouldn't say they fall apart, but they're not designed for that. Things like the canvas and stuff, you tend to chew through the front edge of the tires yep. and stuff like that. So. Okay, so let's talk about the engine. Um, it's a beautiful engine, 250 kilowatts of power. What's that in horsepower? Uh, about 338, I believe. Okay. Um, that's, that's a healthy number, especially yep. given the fuel consumption you get. So it's under 10 litres per 100 kilometres. Um, any downsides to the engine that you found? No, I mean, well, so this is the new B58, which has replaced the N55 that was in yes. the M135s, etc. And I have to say, it is definitely more efficient, it's definitely more usable, much more mid-range torque, but I do find it lacks a bit of the top-end excitement that the old car used to have. And when you're really revving out, you feel like you can short shift at about four and a half thousand revs and you're not losing much with this car. Overall, it's a better engine than the old one, but it does lack a bit of that sort of NA feel of the old N55 engine. Tell us about the gearbox, because I know that has had progressive changes and this feels like the best it's been. Do you think the gearbox is good? Absolutely. Now I went to, so my first M135 was a ZF8 speed Yep. and it was brilliant. I decided to swap it up a little bit and go for a manual two years Ooh, down the track. Okay. The manual was good, when you were sort of getting up it on an A and B road, yep. but everywhere else it kind of fell a bit short, especially yep. when I was used to this. Many reasons, one of them being the eight speed in this, when you knock it back into eight, we're doing yep. what, 90K yep. on a hundred speed limit, just yep. so you know. <laughs> um, so, and we're doing 1200 revs. So it's, it's sipping fuel, you know, and, and, and on the highway, that's, that's brilliant, that's a bonus for me. Whereas if we're in the manual now, it would be doing 2,000 revs, yep. so. Yep. The, the best bit is it's a no cost option. So you're not paying any extra. Yes. So just get the ZF gearbox. They Absolutely, well, awesome. we pay two and a half thousand pounds extra for what? a ZF8 speed. So that's, that's four and a half thousand that dollars we pay more for that, car, that gearbox, so. That is insane. Yep. The biggest highlight to me about this car has to be the interior and the fact that you get iDrive 6, that is sensational. Can you walk us through some of these features? Yeah, so I, I totally agree and I think it's brilliant that you can buy yourself a 1 Series and have iDrive 6, which is the same infotainment system as I've got in my 7 Series, yeah. uh, which is which is a great, you know, it's a great thing to have at this price point. What's it like to live with day to day? Because it, it is one of our favourite infotainment systems at Car Advice. We rate it above the rest of the manufacturers. Is it as easy to use as time goes on? Uh, it definitely is, and I am a bit biased because I spend more time just in BMWs. Yeah, <laughs> just a fraction biased. And I think all the other, like the MMIs and uh, Mercedes, they've they've all caught up a bit. But uh, I still think this is the easiest version or easiest yep. infotainment system to use. I have to say though that I think the iDrive Five, the one before this, was a lot more simplistic. 
That's what I thought as well. Having your stacked menus, a stacked now menus, with the vertical ones. Yep, and also the fact that you've got the touch screen functionality on there. But actually, it's almost overcomplicated things because yep. I tend to never use the touch screen function myself. But the, maybe that's just because I'm old school and I'm yep. used to the iDrive Five and, and the one before that. So I always use the the controller down here. But I, I reckon that's the same with gesture control. I think it is the most pointless function in the world because <laughs> you've got a volume control, you've then got a steering wheel. Now you can hover hands and do stuff it's just so have you watched my videos <laughs> <laughs> i go on about that a lot and i think it's but it's funny it's something that people always talk about it's what bmw yeah. used to market the new 7 series so it gets people talking about it but actually in functionality you end up doing this and almost crashing <laughs> off the road because it doesn't work half the time so <laughs> um now we're on a pretty rough road here yep. we've had a look at the interior we are in comfort at the moment yep um Obviously, it, it is pretty firm, but the thing is that this road is, is quite bad. Australian conditions, we always talk about this in our reviews and, and go, oh, well, the road's different in Australia. This is a prime example. You can leave a perfect highway and come to a, a, a country road. Sure. Do you find that this feels different to the cars you drive in the UK, given the type of road we're on? Uh, well, we also get very bad A and B roads in the yep. UK, and I go on about this a lot in my channel. And in fact, you Australians are lucky because the M lights, they come standard with adaptive suspension. Yes. If you try one of these with the regular passive setup, they are terrible. Yeah, okay. Um, I would say they're even worse than having it in sports, and they just seem to have no rebound control. Yep. So it's not perfect, and it certainly throws you around a bit, but then you've got to remember it's a small reasonably lightweight hatchback so they can only do so much with that engineering yep okay cool one thing we're going to do in both of these cars now if you drop the speed to 60 yep i want you to punch it to 100 yep and i want to hear the noise i want to see which one of these sounds better so here we okay, go okay so i'm into manual there. as well so yep. we can get the most all right so we're, we're actually at 40 but let's uh get about uh, ready yep go do it so good it's that is so good that pins you to the seat it really like, does yeah that that's the thing you you cannot match that to a four cylinder like a four cylinder has that pep but this actually has like like you got a rugby player come up and just shunt you in the back and it just keeps pushing you exactly well it's funny you say that the, the shunting in the back because you can feel that it's rear wheel yep. driven you can feel exactly. those rear wheels pushing yep. you in the back whereas even all-wheel drive cars you feel it pulling you more. And I know that's, I think that's a bit of a geeky thing to say, but yep. you, you genuinely can feel that in, in rear wheel driven cars yep. like this or Porsche 911, you can feel it pushing you yep. in the back, you know? All right, well, we've had a crack in the uh, BMW 1 Series and I must say, uh, it is a great car, but you are slightly biased. I think we need to head back, <laughs> jump into the Golf Farm and yeah. see how that compares. <laughs> So we're out in the Golf R now. I've been in Australia about two weeks and I can't help but notice I've seen so many Golf Rs out here. They are literally like, it's like they're breeding. They it's are. really strange. They're trying to, to gain extra popularity by doing cheaper editions. So we have the Golf GTI original, the Golf R grid. So they're, they're doing things to entice people into these higher spec models because people aren't worried about paying 55 something thousand dollars for a Golf. This one here is the seven speed with the dual clutch auto. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't know, dual clutches just don't sit well with me. And, and the reason is at low speed, the stuttering and the, uh, you know, try reversing up a hill while you're parking. Yep. It just doesn't work. Um, whereas a proper torque converter, smooth as silk. I agree. And also, ironically, I think they almost take a bit of an excitement out of the drive as well because they're yep. too smooth for their own good. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And if we if we dial back a couple of revs here and sort of manually shift up, the gear shifts are razor sharp. But I mean, what's the benefit? Like, I genuinely don't notice any difference there with um, the eight-speed ZF. It, it's still smooth and, and cracks through those gears. I don't really understand what the benefit is to a DSG when you can have a normal gearbox that's so good. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And I think that's complement more to the brilliant ZF8 speed than it is to the DSG. It's not like this box is bad in any areas except yep. for the sort of creep function that you said. Yep. Now, one area where the Golf is better than the uh, BMW is 
I, I'm definitely noticing it here is the ride. So the ride on this choppier stuff is a bit smoother. And I think that comes down to a greater level of variation between the comfort and the, and the you know, sport mode, and this is called race. When you are in race mode, this is much firmer. Whereas in sport mode, the BMW is just slightly firmer than it is sort of in, in comfort. Like you, you don't feel like there's as much of a breadth of difference there. Probably not so much of an issue if you're driving around the city and stuff like that. Out here, clearly you want a, a softer setup, but not many people are gonna be spending the time out in the country. Totally agree. Like spending a bit of time in this car out here on these roads without looking in the wing mirror and realizing you're in the hatchback you could almost think that you're in a passat or something yeah. bigger because it does carry itself over the bumpy roads so much better it's more pliant it feels almost more planted as well and uh, and it is a nice feeling when you want the car to settle down yeah. and be a grown up car not just a hot hatch <laughs> So let's just talk about the interior in general, like space, driving position, how do you find it? Well, how tall are you? Six foot four. Yeah, right. So you f you seem to fit better in here. I don't know, in the, in the one series you were like right up against the roof here, you've got plenty of clearance there. Yep. Are you finding it a bit more comfortable? I am, uh, and it also feels more spacious in here. I think yep. that's because we've got more glass and more light in No here. sunroof as well. No sunroof, and as you say, more, more of a gap between my head and the roof. So this being the facelifted version of the Golf 7, or the Golf 7.5 as they call it, you've got an updated interior. This, I've, I've got to tell you, this looks a million bucks. So the old one look, looked okay, but this looks a million bucks. You've got the virtual cockpit, which yep. is from the Audi family. In here you have things like your map displayed there. You've got a speedo, it tells you which gear you're in. That all looks beautiful, it's nice and responsive. This thing is huge. The infotainment system takes it to the next level for Volkswagen but it has one feature that really, really annoys me. There's no knob. Yes. Yeah, you don't need to laugh about that, but <laughs> I like knobs in the car for volume because it means I don't have to faff about with things to change the volume. I understand I can do it here, yep. but sometimes you just want to quickly do it and it's, it's not there, it's all touch screen. It's intuition for us slightly older folk, isn't yep. it? <laughs> Especially, Exactly. Yep. And I love this feature, when you approach with your finger, it brings up a menu at the bottom to give you extra, extra sort of commands. So instead of having everything thrown onto the screen, you've got a little bit more versatility and, and it just, just works well. Around the cabin here, you've got little bits like your R badge on the steering wheel, flat bottom on the steering wheel, nice to hold as well. I think the BMW one feels a little bit better. But the question is, what do you think about the interior quality? Obviously, you're buying a BMW over there, which means you get BMW quality. Yep. Do you think that this is befitting of a price tag that pretty much matches the BMW? It's hard to say. I mean, there is, there's certain amounts of Audi in here, which, yep. which is a good thing. I think the finish, the fit and finish is very good. To me, the BMW, especially the LCI 2 that we've been in, which is the new facelift version of the 1 Series, I think they've really stepped up the game a yep. bit there. And even things like the dash, although you've got a sort of watered down version of the of the uh, virtual cockpit there. I actually prefer things like the, the dashboard in, in the new one it series. It looks amazing. Yeah, and even the dash, it looks like it's been hand sewn. It probably yep. hasn't at that price point. <laughs> but, yeah. But it looks like it has, and it, and it certainly feels very premium. I wouldn't say there's much between them because this is a very well built car, yep. um, but I probably slightly prefer the, the one series interior. No, <laughs> what a surprise. <laughs> But there's a problem here. <laughs> like some of these celebrities that you're driving around that have fake bits attached to them, this has some fake stuff. So if I move this across to race, now I'm gonna do what we did before in the, uh, in the BMW. I'm gonna slow this down to about sort of 40 kilometers an hour. So I'm gonna pin it to 100. So here we go. That sounds so good. Yeah, that sounds so good, but it's fake. The noise isn't real. It, it, it almost has a certain five-cylinder quattro sound to it exactly. when we know there's a full bar under the engine, under the hood. Exactly. It's <laughs> so wrong. Like, I, I love it, but it's so wrong. So yeah. that's that's a little bit frustrating, and, and you definitely do not feel like kicking the back. 380 newton metres of torque, 213 kilowatts of power. Yeah. What's that in horsepower? It's, it's about 290 brake horsepower in this Australian version. Now, you say this Australian version. What do you mean by that? Uh, well, I've just done my research about five minutes ago and, uh, <laughs> and figured out that actually for some reason in the UK the Golf R comes with about 310 horsepower so the Aussie one is is about 20 brake horsepower down. Yes, they detune it for Australian conditions. Now that can mean one or two things. Either it gets hot here and it doesn't get hot anywhere else in the world which is wrong yeah. um, 
or it's our fuel quality. And I know that we have issues with fuel quality in Australia. So sure. to preserve the engine and to allow it to run with proper timing and all that sort of business, it is better to run it with um, slightly sort of <laughs> lower quality fuel and less power. Yep, okay, that makes sense. Okay, so the only thing left for us to do here, yep. and this is probably the bit that everyone's been waiting for, is to figure out which one is quicker. Yes. And I don't think there's any point finishing this comparison until we do. There you have it, the BMW is quicker. I must admit, I was pretty surprised by that. Rear wheel drive versus all wheel drive. What's your take on it? Well, it didn't actually surprise me too much because driving the car back to back, I have to say the M140 did feel a bit punchier. Yep. Look, I was hoping that the, the Golf would perhaps feel a little bit better. It is, I don't know, it is the smart man's option, isn't it? Like it's, it's all wheel drive, it's comfortable. It's a practical option if you need something a bit quick, but at the end of the day, the real drivers, the real enthusiasts are really only gonna go for one option. Absolutely, I, I totally agree with you. And I think if it was a wet day, for instance, like any day back at home in the UK, uh, it might have been a different story in terms of the performance of the acceleration figures. But uh, I agree, I think the, the overall package of the Golf is, is, is fantastic. There you have it, the BMW is the winner. Were we right? Or is this influenced far too much by Joe Achilles? Let us know in the comments below and let us know whether we were right with this. What would you choose instead? Head to caradvice.com for all your BMW news and don't forget to subscribe.